we do have to talk about an esports team that's also changing the game. Uh, Malik, do you want to talk about this? Yes. So uh, last, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, uh, esports organization Cloud9 announced that they are like officially signing a roster of all females. Um, mm -hmm. And now they actually have three Valorant rosters. Um, so this is Cloud9 White, which is their all-female roster. They've got Cloud9 Blue, which is their primary roster. And then they've got uh, Cloud9 Korea, which is their South Korea um, Valorant roster. But what's really cool about this is uh, last month, there was a all-women's Valorant tournament. Uh, it was called For the Women's Summer Showdown. Uh, they were previously called Team Magical, and they went and they won, and they actually beat out another organization's all-female team for the top uh, number one spot. Uh, it consists of Alexis, Annie, Dro, Mel, Jazzykins, and Kat. What do you guys think about more esports organizations and more esports in general adding either all female rosters or just bringing more females into the into the competitive scene? Um, I have quite mixed feelings about this because, well, it exists on Counter Strikes for decades. I mean, right. All females roster always existed. And mm. if you take a look at Overwatch, for instance, you have Gagari, who is female, yeah. on the mixed team. Like, she's, well, mixed team. No, she's the only woman of the entire league. But right. I don't really believe in all female or all male roosters because, yes, of course, you need representation, etc., etc. But it doesn't kick off in traditional sports. And I don't see it kicking off in esports if it's still separated from the main roster. Like they are the main roster, and we all understand that it's male. It's yeah. not main, actually. So I have quite mixed feelings because I'm mm. happy to see more women in esports. But on the other side, I wish we could just yeah. blend people together because I'm pretty sure some women are way better than some men. Yeah. And but yeah, I don't see that. And to be fair, they just competed at the Nerd Street Gamers Open Qualifier and made it uh, to the main bracket. Um, they got knocked out of uh, the opening bracket, but they did make it all the way through and beat out quite a few other organizations. Um, but sorry, go ahead, Camille, you were going to speak. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, Ophelia, I completely agree with you. I, I feel like the common expectation is when women hear this story it's like yeah this is great this is awesome yeah female and i'm so happy to see more women in esports but at the same time why do we need an all female team that just shows you how far we have to go like i yeah. understand that we do need an all female team to help um promote women in esports but at the same time it just it's it's very, it's just very sad uh, to see that it's not accepted as norm, especially with something when yeah. it comes to video games. Like we right. see that Ophelia mentioned in sports, traditional sports, and you never see any of the female teams get near as much um, attention as the main event or the male dominated um, sports teams. So it, it's kind of setting females up for failure, failure, if that makes sense. Um, especially when, you know, I think of, Things like the FGC, where you have people competing as individuals and you see females competing alongside men, right? So right. Um, it, it's not impossible. <laughs> so yeah. it's just unfortunate oh. for uh, a community that is always trying to fit itself as a sport um, and still land in the traditions that may not be well as um, or not may not be well for the whole community um when they, they could have stood apart from traditional sports and say no everyone competes together and there's right. no real reason to separate male and female in esports i mean yeah. traditional sports you can say okay we don't have the same physiology etc et video games like i i'm pretty sure we can all press buttons <laughs> so i don't see why we should need two different leagues yeah, right. I, I I agree with both of you on that. And I think another big thing that comes with it too is, and this is something that 
no one likes to have to think about, but it is the unfortunate reality. Do you feel like this might be a move by esports organizations to validate females in esports before combining rosters? Do you think that maybe they feel like they don't have enough community support? Or do you think that if they had a mixed roster that they would do just fine? If they it's had a mixed, person. yeah, I think if they had a mixed roster, it, it would be just fine. I think they're thinking more of a marketing standpoint. How do you market a mixed roster? It's hard because unfortunately there's some guys out there that are idiots um, and think women should not play video games. Right. I, I'm just going to put it out there. That's that's the fact. Um, so it's hard for some males to digest uh, females taking ser gaming seriously and as a professional career and because it's it lands so closely to internet culture you leave yourself open when you do that so i think the safe option um for organizations is to create a separate all-female team for whatever game their team's competing in mm -hmm. but just because it's safe it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right choice like when you um, phase, right? They hired their first female Ewok um, when she was signed, right? Uh, so it's possible. And I felt like that news really stood out to me because it was different. So I'm waiting for the first organization to, in, especially in a shooter game, um, like a Call of Duty <laughs> organization to really announce a female player on the main roster would be great. Yeah, they did that on Overwatch. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, there's only one, but um, yeah. to answer your question, Malik, I don't really believe in it because we've seen that we've seen that for a decade. Like I've said, in Counter Strike, you had Millennium, you had many female teams, and mm -hmm. they did great. They won many tournaments, but you never hear about it. And like we in 2020, and we're surprised to see an old female roster. It's kind of sad. I mean, yeah. it feels like the you're a good gamer for a girl. And I still don't get that sentence. Yeah, that's the yeah. unfortunate part. And one one company, despite their esports practices over the years that has done really good with including females is Blizzard. We've yeah. had female players in StarCraft. We've had female players in Hearthstone. Actually, uh, VK Lion just won uh, the Hearthstone World Championship last year. So I think that it is also up to the the video game developers to say, you know, we don't want this to be a, a separate but equal thing. We want them to be mixed playing together because at the end of the day, it's video games. It's all, it's the same thing. There's no physical boundaries and there shouldn't be any boundaries. Video games should be open to everyone. And also too, it would be kind of sucky for girls growing up playing video games, wanting to get into esports, thinking that they'll never make it into the major league because they have to go to an all females league. But right. That just doesn't seem like the right mentality. And mm -hmm. it is nice so far that Cloud9 White is playing in the first strike Valorant tournament, which is an official Riot tournament. But I just hope that we see, you know, more mixing of the rosters and yeah. that, you know, we don't get to the point where we need to have a separated female league like there is in CSGO, like you said, Ophili. Just just look for good players. Like, yeah. I, I, I'd imagine there are plenty of, like, great female players who, oh, like... Oh, yeah, there's a who lot could of compete, good female players. Who could compete on the level of, like, you know, like that high-intensity level that you see in competitive play, whether it's in a Valorant or a League of Legends and so on and so forth. Like... We need to just, there, there needs to stop being this level of fear, you know? Like, I don't know why esports is so afraid of whatever, because you're right, Camille. The, the internet's the internet. People have their reaction, right? Like, some there's just some idiots out there, and it sucks, and it's annoying. But, like, I don't know why that's just, well, that's such a hindrance to esports companies, you know? People are going to watch, regardless of it. They're going to watch. Because at the end of the day, male or female, they want to see high level play of the game you know right. and and that's what it comes down to and whoever can provide that if you believe that they are like they have the skill put them on the team like and just play who cares what the chat's gonna say inevitably they're gonna get bored and they're gonna go away and the more that we do it the more that it becomes a normal thing and it stops being such a problem with chat you know yeah. like we just yeah. it needs to start getting normalized and and there needs to be there needs to stop being this like fear from esports to be like well no, no no let's just let's just make an all-female team you know like i look at the fgc and you watch your evos or whatever it may be if you're watching the pool play and stuff like that 
all people of all different walks of life are showing up on stage, you know, and, and it's usually it's never a big thing. And, and so like, let's just start bringing that into all esports. Right. That's and what I, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the story of Giggory, but she was playing just competitively and she mm -hmm. was an insane Zarya player, like out of this world, probably one of the best Zarya players at the time. She had to go onto a stream where they had cameras set up watching her and watching her keyboard to prove that she wasn't cheating. Oh, yeah. In Overwatch yeah. Contenders, the semi-pro league, there have been players that have been banned from teams and from competing in Overwatch for cheating during matches. Yeah. So that kind of barrier really, really sucks. It's not just... It, it sucks that it's not just the community. It's the fact that she had to feel like she had to do a stream to prove that she wasn't cheating just to prove her skill, whereas yep. other players are getting signed, you know, just left and right. It's, it's really it's like you yeah. said, Caboose. It, we really need to shift that mentality. And hopefully more teams start adding on females. I know that Gen G's all-female Valorant roster uh, does kind of play and uh, scrim with their main roster. So that could be something, you know, too, later on, we just see teams merging rosters and just saying, this is our full Valorant team. We swap yeah. them out as we need. Yeah, yeah. and it, it does come back to needing to do the work, right? Like the fact that you have a player that has to go on a web camera show that they're on, they're actually playing with their controller or sorry, their keyboard um, is just ridiculous. That just shows it's really in this case, you have it where the organization is falling to what the fans uh, would want to see rather than setting a standard. And I think it, you know, when we talk about all things in terms of whether it is um, crunch or um, specifically women in gaming, you need those organizations to kind of band together to set a standard like this is how it's going to be done. Um, because this is the right thing to do so we could accept all the community and they have to do the work to find that talent you're not going to find uh, like people like to use the excuse well there's not a lot of females that you play video games it's like no they're there yeah. they may not get as much views because unfortunately those idiots on the internet just want to see the guys playing at you know high levels um so it's up to the organizations to do the work to find those women playing really well and then another issue is that most females don't even want to show that they're female. Because like for the Gagarin's example, some people thought that she was talking the mic while a boy was playing. And why? And sometimes you just don't want to prove that you're female because you know you're going to get some comments and you're not there for that. You just want to play. Just it's yeah. I feel like there's many, many good female players. You just don't see them like you see the boys. Like yeah. if you think right. female streamer, you won't think performance, you'll think boobs. And that's mm -hmm. a problem. Yeah. 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 It's such a deep rooted issue um, is. that just doesn't sit in terms of the teams and like the organizations. It goes much deeper than that. And, you know, we've talked about women in gaming in general and previous squad casts and all of those, it, it's like, we have to do all these little move motions, like whether it is in esports specifically, whether it is in streaming to make it where it's more normalized, like Kabu said. Um, yep. And I really, I don't know when that day will come because you know, I've been gaming for quite some time and I do feel a bit better. It's gotten a little bit better, um, but it, it's still not the best it could be. Um, right. When I, you know, talk to people like Malik and Caboose, my male counterparts, right? Um, and hear their experiences. It, it, it could be better overall. And I hope we get to a point where if it's not in esports, in some other way in gaming, that organizations those that are in power are able to make those decisions do stand up to represent even if it is not the most favorable choice yeah right so. like we're, we're taking baby steps you know like it, it, all female teams and stuff like that in esports involving more females in esports it's not necessarily a step in the wrong direction but i feel like it's just it's not the right direction that most people would hope for uh, mm -hmm. And so hopefully we uh, we switch lanes soon, and and I and I hope it's not just continuous baby steps like this. Let's take some leaps and bounds, you know. Let's yeah. just start going all in on this stuff. I, again, I, I just 
there needs to be there needs to stop being this level of fear yeah and one thing that i always stress to people and i've explained this to people in more of the context of race but it works just the same is there's mm -hmm. a difference between inclusivity and equality there is a very big difference and most people don't realize that if you're just including somebody to include somebody you don't have any actual faith or there is no goodwill behind the merit of their skill you are just as bad as everybody else you we want to include women and all people of color and all backgrounds into esports because it is a place where literally anyone can play anybody can be at the highest level it just depends on how willing the community is to be open mm -hmm. and accept the fact that gaming is for everyone and that people at the top level can come from anywhere no matter their yeah. gender no matter you know their skin color their sexual preference anything it doesn't matter but gaming as a whole has a lot of steps to go through in order to get there but like you said now is the time to take leaps it doesn't make sense to be making baby steps right now when you know it's a new valorant is a new esport they have the, yes. the most opportunity out of any other esport to make waves and i think that they should but it is nice that there are some baby steps being made by the you know the esports organizations to get there yeah, yeah. Um, Triac mentioned in chat, I don't think there's any rules against females in esports, is there? And and that's the thing, there there isn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's crazy yeah. that, you know, yes. these organizations still feel the need to announce that they have an all-female roster. Mm -hmm. And I think it could also be used as like, and I'm not saying this is the case um, with Cloud9, but sometimes it's like a marketing thing, like um, where organizations or just companies in general want to like show that they're for a social cause um, and they will announce like an all female team, right? Or like, we're doing this for females, but then what are you really doing? It, go back, it goes back to Malik's point, right? Like, what are you really doing to make sure that they're a part of the organization, that you're helping build them up? They're just not a face to show that you stand for that movement. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that... We do see that in the future, uh, but it, how things are looking at maybe a while. So I think in our own mini bubbles, we could just continue to advocate for what we feel um, is right in terms of representation in competitive gaming uh, with women. All right. For now, I think it's time that we take a break. I, I ran out of water, so I'm going to grab some water. I hope you three do the same. Uh, chat, we will be back as talking Spider-Man and Final Fantasy 16, so stay tuned. <laughs> 